Hi! So today we're going to try a new thing where I handle my compulsive need to talk about the same stories over and over and over again by talking about them in a different format this time. So, the frog prints. The first thing about the frog prints is that the actual for real title is The Frog King or Iron Henry. Now, Iron Henry and the Frog King are two separate characters. Iron Henry does not make it into most adaptations. And despite being the title character, he doesn't show up until like the last page. So we'll come back to him. And the Frog King. First of all, it's a little weird that he's a king. You'd think there would be more concern about him being missing and, you know, out being a frog, not actively kinging, if he's actually already in charge of a country. Uh, anyway. You know the drill. The princess, she drops her ball. The frog offers to go and get it out of the well. Uh, if she agrees to, in exchange, let him eat off of her plate and sleep in her bed. She says yes, because fairy tale characters are not known for their excellent decision making. She goes home with her ball, forgets all about the frog. Until the frog comes and knocks on the door. And the frog tells the king the princess's dad, the princess's dad, all about everything. And the princess confirms this. And then the king, he says to the princess, well, you know, it's important to keep our promises. And like, I get where he's coming from, okay? Like, that is kind of the whole moral of the story. But he's a king. She's his daughter. Isn't it gonna be a little weird if, you know, the princess just has a frog chilling out in her bed with her? I feel like that's gonna cause some issues for the kingdom if it continues to go on long term. And I feel like, you know, as a dad and also a person who has an image to maintain as the leader of the country, maybe you should be discouraging things like talking frogs sleeping with your daughter. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, she's his daughter. Uh, she may or may not be a minor, but in this era, it, it doesn't really matter. She's, he's in charge of her until she's married. So, like, you'd think that he could just be like, okay, hey, frog, I'm sorry, but, you know, the princess is my daughter. She lives in my house. It's actually my plate and my bed, and I'm saying no. She did not have the authority to make this promise to you. We are not going to have the frog here. It's, it's not going to work. Let's talk about other ways I can repay you for getting the ball. But he doesn't. He says, yeah, you got to hang out with the frog, honey. Sorry. Uh, and we get through the day with the frog eating off her plate, and she doesn't like that. But things are tolerable until it's bedtime, and the frog wants to get into bed with her. No kissing occurs. It is important to note no kissing occurs. The kissing is a later addition to the story. What happens is the princess has had enough. She is drawing the line here. She'll eat with the frog. She does not want the frog in her bed. So she picks the frog up and she flings him at the wall. And as soon as the, he hits the wall, instead of, you know, dying, uh, he turns back into a human, which just raises so many questions. What exactly were the terms of this curse? You must be a frog until you become so obnoxious that you drive someone to murder? Like, how? It doesn't make sense. Why? Why is that the solution to the problem? If you just have to have someone fling you at a wall, couldn't you just like get anybody to do that? Why, why go through this whole big process? Like, do you specifically have to have a beautiful woman throw you at the wall? Wouldn't it be a lot easier to just say, hey, I will get you this ball and in return, I just need you to throw me really hard? Why, why, why the whole thing where we just, Torture her a little bit first. <laughs> it... I haven't encountered another Enchanted Bridegroom story quite like this, 
I mean, there, there's other ones where there's a component of violence in the breaking of the spell, but it's usually, the violence is kind of part of the process. It's not like the whole thing. <laughs> um, like in Lindworm, she does have to whip him, but then also she has to embrace him. I, the, the wall throwing is just, it's just baffling. Almost as baffling as the fact that they then proceed to get married and, and live happily ever after. Like why, why, why would you want to marry somebody who threw you at a wall with every intention of killing you? And why is she suddenly all cool to marry him? I mean, it doesn't seem like they had a really good relationship before. Is it just, oh, oh, you're, you're handsome now, so I'm all in? Like, I have concerns about this relationship. Hi, Alfie. Hi, baby. Kitty break. Hi. Okay, so they have their whole dysfunctional relationship going on. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, now to the really interesting part. Iron Henry. Iron Henry is the Frog King's best friend. And they're really, really close. Uh, Iron Henry was so upset when his friend got turned into a frog that his heart broke. So they had to go in and put three iron bands around his heart to hold it together so that he wouldn't like die of sorrow. Uh, and now that the Frog Prince is back to being a human again. Iron Henry goes to pick him up and his new bride and take them home. And his heart heals. And he doesn't need the bands anymore. And they break off as they're riding off into wherever the Frog King came from in the first place. Uh, so this dude, this dude had open heart surgery in fairy tale times. And we're here talking about the toxic relationship his best friend is in? Like... I don't care about them. They're a mess. Tell me more about Iron Henry. The logistics there are just... I mean, I don't know how you get the iron bands on in the first place, but like, if the iron bands are there to hold the heart in one piece because it's broken, like why, why do the iron bands break when the heart heals itself? Like, are, are they just designed to automatically break down when they're no longer necessary? You'd think something like this, you know, who's gonna put stuff in your heart to fix you in this sort of setting? You'd think maybe it was like magic, right? But I mean, they're iron bars. And everyone knows iron and magic don't mix, which sort of implies that this was like a normal surgery, not like a magic thing. Like, how? Anyway, the Frog King or Iron Henry. Iron Henry rocks. The Frog King is kind of a jerk and makes some really bad relationship choices. The princess is just a straight up attempted murderess. <sighs> um, and that's really all I have to say about that. Thanks for watching. Bye.